have this weekend, and I knew that I got to talk to you. Then, uh, uh, <coughs> Francois Constantin. Yeah. Exact number is 
increasing every weekend. So do you have idea? Every yeah, weekend. Yeah, it's just increasing every weekend. So could anybody tell you like uh, tell like how many what can happened already? Any games? Like thousand? Uh, you guys know I know. My own also. No no no, just came. So how many? It's close to uh, seven eighty. 780 watt cam. Ah, okay. okay. Wow. And uh, I really feel uh, you should actually connect more and like share our experience so we could actually inspect the yams. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, in, in the topic that we, we talk, like uh, because uh, Constantine come from the core team, then we we ask him about we have a new editor for WordPress uh, 5.0. It's called Gutenberg. Uh, can you tell us more about the Gutenberg project? What, what, what is uh, uh, what, what is like and, and how what we will use the Gutenberg in, in the car in the future? Um, so what it's like? <laughs> <laughs> it's um it's a new and improved. Really yeah. Yeah. It's, a, it's a new and improved. This is um, yeah. editing experience in, in WordPress. So. Um, the, the team working on, on Gutenberg has been um, okay. <laughs> it has been in development um, for over a year now. It started in uh, uh, 2017 in, in January 2017. It is available as a plugin. You can already use it right, if you wanted to today. How, how many people use uh, Gutenberg already? Already tried Gut Gutenberg? All right, Maybe four or five. All right. Um, it is uh, currently slated to be included in the 5.0 release, um, and that is scheduled for, um, I think, April or May. Um, this year? This year, yeah. Uh, so they're trying to, to, to get that out in 5.0. Um, no worries. Um, uh, yeah, it, it fundamentally changes the way that you interact with WordPress, right? When you, when you write a post, when you write a page, any kind of content, it fundamentally changes it. So you go away from like a, a blank, um, uh, you know, text area input field that you have, um, and, and you go towards a, a concept of blocks where you just have content types more or less that you use and uh, put together a, a post or a page. So for example, a, um, you know, a heading would be um, a piece of content that you would add to your post, uh, as well as uh, a gallery, for example, or just a single image. Um, or just a blob of text, or um, a quote. You know, like the, all of these things are just um, pieces of content that you put together, um, and that yeah, make up your your post or page. And that is extendable to you know uh, as far as you want to take it. You know, um, so things like um, you know widgets um, that you know today as widgets, like a list of the most recent comments, could be just another block that you include in your in your page. Um, and from there on out, uh, short codes. And all these concepts that are currently um, part of WordPress um, can be boiled down into blocks that can be reused um, to make up um, your site. Okay. It's, it's like a it's like a page builder. What? Yeah. How, how many people have tried the page builder, like a virtual composer or a site origin? How many people? Yeah, a lot. Good amount of you. Okay. And, can, can you uh, say about the difference of a, what is the point of Gutenberg different from a page builder? So, um, currently, uh, Gutenberg is, is focused on uh, the post content, right? So that, that database field of post content, uh, that's where everything takes place in the first release coming out of 5.0. Eventually, the goal is to um, be able to do site customization with blocks. So extending um, you know, uh, Gutenberg to not only cover um, posts, but your entire page. Um, and so eventually you should be able to create page templates with, um, with blocks, um, uh, pretty much in the same way as you're used to now from, from page builder plugins. And, uh, and uh, actually, say something about uh, page builder. Uh, can, can, you, can you share your opinion about page builder and put it first? So for me, as a developer, I always hated this builder. I think like all developers would relate. Like I don't like when somebody actually like manipulate WordPress in a way that like if you uninstall that plugin, your WordPress doesn't look same. 
So for many years, I ignored page builder. There are visual composer. We have visual composer for over five years, right? And there are even yeah, there are even like far popular page builder also, like Cyber is in page builder and other things. That that is very old. So I always hated page builder because like you have to like be very dependent on it. And if you go beyond from it, like you think your site will not actually uh, look the same. But I also embrace page builder because like. If you look at the origin of WordPress, we started as a like simple uh, cafe blog, as a like blog platform. Now we moved far beyond that. Now we don't create just only blogs in WordPress. We could have like multi-dimensional website with uh, serve a lot of like completely different purpose. And in my life, I try to create everything in WordPress. It's just because my choice of ecosystem. It's just because like I know this ecosystem better. So I also embrace page builder because like it gives me freedom. I really don't have to like wait more for my developers to actually create a PhD and my front end developer like turns it in a markup and like create a template template or something. Page builder gives me easy access to actually change my design whenever I want. And at the same time, like uh, I could actually make my even I'm not a developer, I'm a horrible developer, so even I still have a little bit chance to make my personal blog even better with Base Builder. But Base Builder and Gutenberg is different, it still is, is very different because Gutenberg is just an editor. So it's all about like how you can insert your content in the website only for the post for now. For now. And I think like this now will be like extended to all this year. So like now you can't actually build your website with Gutenberg. And even actually a lot of people are still not building their website with Gutenberg. So one of our main reasons why we want to actually bring Gutenberg in front in this conversation is because for the developers, for the people who build website for uh, other people, it's pretty important to actually to focus on Gutenberg. And because when WordPress 5.0 release, the WordPress normal uh, editor will completely shift to Gutenberg. So there will be a lot of chaos if we don't actually educate people properly. Because you are used to in writing something, then on the next day when you update your uh, WordPress dashboard could look very different. So sometimes people are afraid of change. Uh, I, I completely understand that. I heard a lot of like conversation why we need to actually go to this drug, drastical change or something. But you see the way technology works. Sometimes you need need to make a jump. Sometimes you need to take a like leap of faith and like move into next phase of change. So I I embrace for face builder. I embrace like Gutenberg. I don't like every aspect of it, but like I am open to it. Uh, so I could see like what we could do together. And and you have uh, you said that you you have a company to do something like a S uh, SaaS service. And uh, like a team business, can can you share share us about that? Uh, like uh, then I I have to actually go back in like 2016 and 17. In WordPress, we actually built a complete REST API for WordPress. I think like that was one of the biggest thing we have done to WordPress since like maybe custom post tag or something in 2011. So though like we feel a lot of those were actually mistakes because we are going back and forth in a lot of different things. But that's how it is. The technology you don't know the right directions. You have to actually choose one and move forward with it. So I feel for, for, as a businessman, as a, like uh, uh, as I want to actually have more freedom, how I want to build my app. I feel like REST API is a very great thing for WordPress and going forward it will actually change a lot of different things. For us who owns business, we are actually looking for how we integrate like SaaS and a lot of like different kind of business model inside WordPress. With REST API it gives us a freedom like if I am building a solution or a plugin that actually has to do something like event maybe. Uh, if you look at some of the modern things. The event theme, their post screen, doesn't look like WordPress anymore. It's almost like a form where you actually insert certain type of data. And when you look at their post, it also doesn't look like WordPress. It's just like a different kind of post because we have like custom post type. With REST API, it will actually give us even more freedom as now REST API is also like merged with like admin dashboard and other uh, endpoint is also available. So in future, we could see the theme developers are building not only the front end for WordPress, they could actually build the back end for WordPress in REST API as well, and it doesn't have to be WordPress dashboard. So you are building like a particular solution for a particular like group of customers. 
you could actually give a like completely unique experience to your customer. And I also feel like it will give a lot of uh, freedom to all, all those like app developers because the difference between app and web is actually shifting very quickly. So app developer has like more to do just like because a lot of people I know who develop apps, they use like WordPress as a backend CMS. In future, they could do even far more than that. So REST API is actually giving us an edge on tons of technology. And I think like a lot of innovation is going to happen. And as you could actually build whatever application you want in whatever technology you want with REST API, you don't have to even use PHP. A lot of the people are building a lot of things in JavaScript, whatever like choice of framework they have. So SAS could be our future, and like REST API is actually enabling us to experiment with a lot of new things. You, you said, you said like uh, uh, the API will be the new standard, right? And the team, uh, maybe the business, should shift to, to the API, mainly? Yeah, you see with page builder, team business is already becoming irrelevant. Like uh, the footer part is not ready yet, but we have like page builder like element of that game. Yeah. Like amazing popularity in last one and a half year. They have like over 500,000 active installed now. So with Elementor, it doesn't actually really depend what theme you are using here. You could just select like blank canvas and yeah. present everything in it. And they give you like a lot of like free templates and there are a lot of like other solutions that actually could give like more templates and other things. So I don't feel like this is the end of the business. I feel like they have even more to do because before they are just building the front-end experience, now they could build even back-end experience as well if they embrace the REST API and other things. You said like uh, with API, maybe they can uh, create another backend and put the data to the WordPress. People are already doing it. Already, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. And uh, Constantine, can can you share us about this? Like uh, how WordPress will involve in REST API more in the future, and how 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 we change how to interact with the WordPress with the API. All right. So um, I mean. Just, just um, like Gutenberg shows us now, which is interacting with you know uh, APIs uh, as well, um, you'll be able to um, to switch a lot more to to JavaScript based front ends, right? Um, that then talk to to uh, to an API, you know, the REST API in this case, um, to uh, display the information that you know you need. Um, and so, like Gutenberg already goes in that direction, and and you know, last year we had a REST API um, focus um, that was looking at you know converting a lot of the um, the WP admin parts that we're talking to um, data providers um, to switch those to REST API endpoints by going away from, from AJAX more or less yeah. um, and and just using using those endpoints to um, interact with um, WordPress core, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's really good. But I heard that like WordPress.com already used this technique to to uh, like create a post and page and right. put API to the WordPress.com. Yeah. It's not in PHP anymore. Right? Um, so yeah, with um, Calypso, the um, uh, yeah, Calypso is a, a JavaScript-based um, administration interface um, that uh, WordPress.com uses, um, and that is exclusively, exclusively working with um, JavaScript and the REST API. Um, so WordPress.com has like their own flavor, if you want, of the REST API. Um, although they they have started to switch to um, the core provided uh, REST API endpoints as well. And extending those, um, but that is like one way the future could look like for WordPress, right? It's like you have, um, yeah, a JavaScript-based um, administration interface um, that then talks to REST API, um, and yeah, you're not as dependent on, on PHP anymore, mm -hmm. which also makes you know it a lot faster and 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 you know yeah better to use for you know beginning users now. Yeah. Oh, cool. yeah. Then I, and 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 how do. Can, can you tell us about like uh, in the future when press will release the Calypso or not? Uh, uh, it's not in the plan yet. Uh. So um, Matt always said that um, a Calypso-like interface um, has a big change to to come, uh, come yeah. to WordPress. I don't know if it's going to be Calypso proper, right? Um, but I'm pretty sure that something like Calypso will be the future of WordPress. Um, and I mean, Gutenberg is already um, you know shaping shaping that future, right? Yeah. Um, you already have a JavaScript based um, editor experience. Once we're um, once Gutenberg um, gets extended to do site customization, um, you kind of you kind of you know take over like what the the, the customizer currently does mm -hmm. uh, and bring that um, um, you know to Gutenberg and have like a block based site site um, 
site customization experience. And so going from there to just having the entire app and experience be uh, JavaScript based, um, built on blocks like that, it's just a very small step. Um, it's very good to, to know that um, like a Gutenberg is not just a plugin right on PHP to, to create the editor, but it's right. also use the API yeah. to put the API to the WordPress. Yes. Yeah. That, that's why in the future we can close this and we have a lot more opportunity to interact with WordPress, right? Absolutely, yeah. It provides a lot more freedom, too. Another thing is like a, uh, for this way, uh, do you feel uh, how support from the community or like a, he like or doesn't like it or I, I saw a lot of bad review for Gutenberg. Can, can you share us because you you, sure. you uh, like a talk a lot of people and you attend in the yeah. for like a 49 times, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, can you share us about this? Sure, yeah. So um, when development of Gutenberg started um, over a year ago, um, in, the, in the early stages of development, uh, feedback wasn't great. People were not really excited about um, what they saw so far. Um, it was a very early stage of development, like I said, um, and so the, it, it was hard for people to, to, to see the, the potential, right? But over the, the, the year and, yeah, it was like 14, 15 months now that, that Gutenberg has been in development, that has definitely changed. Um, so uh, with, with Gutenberg evolving and becoming more and more mature, um, uh, People's opinion of it also have changed um, to towards you know the positive. Absolutely, um, one of one of my um, missions, I guess, yeah. of 2017 was to go to as many workshops as I could, um, talk to people, um, and and kind of share my excitement for them, uh, kind of show them like um, the potential for um, you know their sites, their business, um, their blogs um, in a in a post work world. Um, and so I did that a lot. Talked to a lot of people. Um, not just me, but you know, like the entire Gutenberg team as well, and, and, and the team that I work with at Automatic. Um, and so I think the excitement is definitely building. You know, when you look at um, WordCamp schedules nowadays, like yeah. every WordCamp has at least one Gutenberg-related um, uh, session on, on their schedule as well. Um, people <laughs> ask for it. People come up to me all the time, ask about Gutenberg, and, and um, so I think the, the the public opinion has definitely uh, changed a lot um, yeah. towards towards the positive. Absolutely. Very cool. And uh, for the business, like an uh, opportunity, or, or when, when you are using WordPress in your business, what, 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 what do you think it will be changed? What, if, uh, what thing, uh, like uh, the future of WordPress, how you affect your business? And, and maybe you can suggest a lot of people that doing the business with WordPress, how we can like, uh, learn, we can change for, for this. With, with Gutenberg? Um, many things in, in the future, like an API, REST API, Gutenberg, or anything. For Gutenberg, like, uh, one of the main issues, like, Gutenberg still is not on board. So like, you can't actually, uh, it is it's still hard for companies and enterprise to use it for every day. So we are actually, what, what we are uh, like advising people and what we are actually trying to do, we want to see like how our product fit with Gutenberg. Like if we are using, if you have something to say, if you think like something is not working, if you feel like something should be included, just do it in a proper way. Like open up a crack of like porting it or like uh, start maybe a, as an issue in like GitHub. And uh, if you or your team could actually help and if you feel like it's, it's need to change or something, you could actually even contribute in that board and it's actually open for anybody. And we actually, uh, advising companies to actually like uh, ship more focus into Gutenberg and like help the project to ship. And Automatic has taken like a tremendous effort to actually bring and like faster the process. So it's actually about the rest of us, how we embrace it. And for business, a lot of things will change. Like I have a lot of involvement in publication industry. I run like to be uh, like a style magazine in Bangladesh. So a lot of our experience in terms of in terms like how our journalists actually write content and how we publish them is going to change. If you ask me like if I'm worried because uh, some of those uh, publication is almost like eight years old or 10 years old. No, I'm not worried. Like I think like I have the bandwidth and the like programming uh, like developer resource to actually uh, like make up with the whatever things coming in. And we actually have enough time, like this is February, mid-February, and like uh, 
it's like assume that we did might be actually really close to the what can Europe maybe. So we have time to actually still like test and the whole editor is not in there, will be still present as a like separate party or something. So if somebody really needs it, they can still use it. <laughs> so, so you're asking about um, uh, the effects on businesses, right? Yeah. Gutenberg. So one of the things that I, that I um, talked a lot about last year too was um, see Gutenberg as, an, as a business opportunity, right? Yeah. So you said that uh, the theme marketplace has slowed down significantly with um, the emergence of, of page builder plugins. Yeah. So themes are really not something that, um, yeah. So if, if, you're, if you're looking for a business opportunity, um, like looking into um, blocks that people would be interested in, and creating plugins that provide these kinds of blocks, um, like that would be that would be you know the, the best way forward. Like there's going to be a huge demand for like custom things, you know, like your I don't know your Facebook integration, like your Facebook block, right? Things like that. Um, like I'm sure that there's going to be a marketplace at some point where people buy, uh, pay pay good money yeah, yeah, for yeah. the right right kind of block. Yeah. Uh, other thing we also see like uh, I also run and. Um, we have like meetups, WordPress meetup in Dhaka, in my city. Uh, before, a lot of like guys who just have like some experience with HTML and PHP, they're actually trying to customize the themes and like and do like freelancing kind of world. But like with Gutenberg world, learning JavaScript is very important. But like we are pushing the about like journey, uh, learning JavaScript since like 2015. Yeah. Since 2015, what can first, what can be US. So. Right now, like if somebody wants to work with WordPress, he should actually learn JavaScript. That's the main advice to any new developers or any people who are like working on themes. Probably they could have like skipped just learning like jQuery or something and customizing a lot of things. But now it's important to actually learn JavaScript properly. What framework of that JavaScript you suggest to start? That's the like long, not ending battle. Like what that's. The like JavaScript framework, like people should choose. Uh, like, I do not want to recommend anything, but like uh, there are like, a few things that people need to keep in mind. WordPress and Gutenberg is almost written in like vanilla JavaScript, so you are actually open to use whatever you want. But we have a lot of focus in uh, like uh, React, and uh, a lot of like the companies in WordPress already like uh, given like good uh, like focus in React. Me and my company, we choose Vue.js. It's just because like we like writing JavaScript in JavaScript. Like I feel like React is more like HTML kind of thing, like, not other kind of things. And it's like it takes like uh, like the learning curve is a little bit higher. But it, at the same time, I accept like React is far bigger ecosystem. And like if you, like if you want to build app or something, native React native is actually amazing platform. So, like, if you have to learn like Vue.js, then have to do the app in React Native. It doesn't make sense. So it's actually up to you. I will just advise like learn JavaScript properly. Yeah. The, the choice of uh, like framework probably just shift from job to job, from, uh, like project to project, and embrace the technology. And you don't have to learn everything together. Just like be, uh, learn one thing and like do it probably properly. That, that's what it takes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. In, in, in a short, like uh, the future is like a WordPress will will become to the API oriented. Like uh, everyone interact with API, then uh, the new way of uh, creating theme or creating website will be move on uh, JavaScript, right? Yeah. And uh, you have anything add more? Uh, and uh, let's see, like Gutenberg, it also in another way, like all of us who are already using WordPress, we have we know how to use WordPress. The rest of the people, like we use something else, like Tumblr or like a lot of like different kind of experience. We will probably open a new door to a lot of people who are like afraid of HTML, who doesn't look at web in the in the old way. Everything for them is actually like drag and drop and yeah, like put yeah. things together. That's how they are used to. Yeah. So instead of like looking, we are actually that uh, is actually scary for some people. To look at the way that we are actually opening a door for a lot of people. I understand and I feel as a developer, our work is getting complex. <laughs> and working with WordPress is getting complex with time. But that's how it is. That's how we evolve. It's actually 2018. We came a long way from where we started. So. That's like the part of technology growing. Oh, very good. Have you have anything 
you to share what is like uh, how we should uh, change our mind to do the API, what to start. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I think the best advice that I can give is um, go look at the plugin for Zen House. If you're a developer, you know, look at the code. Um, like like you said, like it is it is pretty much um, vanilla JavaScript. It's not it's not too hard to learn. The underlying infrastructure is written in in, in React. Um, understand Gutenberg because that will be the future of WordPress literally. Um, and if if you are looking for you know WordPress based jobs in the future, um, understanding how how this works is going to be essential. Um, other than that, don't see Gutenberg as a threat. See it as an opportunity because it is. It really is. Um, and see like the upsides of it. Um, and I'm excited for you know um, May and and uh, the rest of the year when we start working on site customization um, that is block based. Okay. Thank thank you so much uh, for our speaker. And thank you. For this uh, this time, uh, do you have any question for for the future of WordPress for the Gutenberg for the API? Anyone have a question? Anything? <laughs> uh, anything to share about this? Yeah. Uh, just a quick question about uh, like plugins, like advanced custom fields or types or those kind of plugins which have like you know uh, sort of blocks in a way that a, a, a developer, site creator, site developer would help their like myself. Uh, I'm using WordPress, but I'm creating a uh, child theme or a custom theme using advanced custom feet, custom feet right? Yeah. So uh, with Gutenberg, will I able to switch completely to Gutenberg only, leaving advanced custom fields behind, or you know, <laughs> or <laughs> so so the you know, future of that? All right. So the question was um, with uh, plugins like advanced custom fields, um, how do they behave in a in a Gutenberg world, and, right, and right. I'm going to be able to use it or leave it behind and just use Gutenberg? Yeah. Um, so yes and no, right? Like it, it depends. It depends on what you do with those custom fields and what kind of um, content they are, right? So if, if they're like more kind of metadata, right? You you might not be able to um, uh, to use custom fields in the way that you're used to, right? But this might be something that you uh, might be able to extend Gutenberg with um, and and create like a um, a post meta um, sidebar item, right? Um, I know um, with this specific example, uh, advanced custom fields, that they're also working on getting their plugin Gutenberg ready. And so depending on, on what type of data you have, they might just convert it into a, a content block, right? If it's something that is content that can be displayed in, in a post, and if it's more, yeah, meta information, it will live in like the sidebar that you already have in, in Gutenberg. Um, so I, my answer is it depends. <laughs> yeah, thanks. And then we maybe have to create another API for this field, right? Because that is a custom field for that post. Right. So I, I'm pretty sure that you know the folks over at Advanced Custom Fields um, that they are, you know they have a vested interest in, in, in maintaining or keeping their their plugin relevant as well, and so they, they will make sure that um, it will stay usable with with Gutenberg um, and, and not break back to compatibility. On the other hand, the Gutenberg team as well, right? So like the whole idea of um, post meta boxes um, and maintaining those in Gutenberg. Um, was a very contentious um, piece of the development pro uh, process, um, but they're really close to, to to a solution there that you know is is working for um, for developers. Okay. okay. Uh, any question? Last question for now because we have to move if you want to. <laughs> any question? Please, please also if you you know have questions after, um, please feel free to come come find us and, and ask them, and I'm more than happy to answer. Okay, then thank you very much for our team. Thank you.